The hot dog, one of the most widely known street foods across the globe that brings cheer to all. There are many variations of this delectable treat around the world, and each variation reflects the people who created it. In Ecuador, hot dogs are sold with green salsa and a special Ecuadorian hot sauce, whereas in the Philippines, the hot dog is served bunless with banana ketchup on a bed of rice, usually accompanied by a fried egg. In Alaska, caribou and reindeer dogs are sold by vendors to warm cold customers in the winter months. And the roster of dogs wouldn't be complete without Chicago's own hot dog. A dog assembled with mustard, neon relish, onion, tomatoes, two sport peppers, and a pickle spear. But where exactly did the fabled hot dog come from? The answer lies farther back than one would think. First mention of the hot dog arrives as far back as Homer's The Odyssey, where in an excerpt he describes what most definitely sounds like an early sausage. As when a man besides a great fire has filled a sausage with fat and blood and turns it this way and that, and is very eager to get it quickly roasted. An origin story of the sausage from the age of Roman Emperor Nero and his cook, Gaius, details the creation of the encased meat. The story goes that during a great feast, several pigs were set to roast in the kitchens of Nero's palace. It was the practice of the time to starve the pigs a week before their roasting to clear out the intestines. While Gaius was overseeing the roasting, he noticed that one of the pigs hadn't had its intestines removed. He cut it open to see if it was still edible and found that the intestines were fully cooked and puffed up from the heat. Knowing he had just found something great, he filled the skins with ground game meat and spices, and according to the legend, the sausage was born. During the famous Columbian Exposition, great waves of people flocked to Chicago to observe a century of progress. German immigrants selling sausages from carts received many of these people. The creation of the hot dog bun is widely disputed, but one story has it that a Bavarian concessionaire by the name of Anton Feuchtwanger would loan white gloves to his customers so they wouldn't burn themselves on the scolding sausages he sold. As the story goes, customers kept walking off with his gloves, so much so that he began to run out. He asked his brother-in-law, who just happened to be a baker, to help him out. The baker quickly made a batch of long, soft rolls to fit the sausages, inventing the hot dog bun. The actual authenticity of the story is low at best, the most probable case being that Germans passed down the practice of eating sausages with soft bread over the years. As more and more jobs became open in the bustling Chicago of the 20th century, immigrants left the poverty of their homelands in search of work in the city. However, while they did find work, it was often very hard, grueling labor. Chicago was, for the longest time, a great meatpacking giant in the Midwest, harboring the famous Union Stockyards, one of the largest meatpacking sites in the world. There. Immigrants desperate for pay would find work. In 1906, a young journalist by the name of Upton Sinclair released a novel that delved into the inner workings of the stockyards, called The Jungle. The Jungle exposed the corruption and abuse of immigrants in the meatpacking plants, and ultimately led to the public's awareness of the hazardous and unsanitary practices of the Chicago stockyards. In 1914, World War I erupted across Europe, bringing more immigrants to Chicago. After the war, the 1920s happened, a time of joy and footloose foxtrots. The hot dog continued to be sold as a concession at events, but there was still one more event to occur before it was truly embraced by the people of Chicago. During the Depression, life for the immigrants became even harder as work was scarce and food prices were high. 
One such immigrant was Robert Cass, who lived in Chicago during this time. Robert and his brother Emil would gain wage by pushing around a vegetable cart. When I was uh, 10, I started working for a man, who, a young man who was selling fruits and vegetables, and he fixed up a little basket and put items of the uh, vegetables and fruits that he wanted to sell in that basket, and then I would go from house to house, knock on the door, and as the homemaker would come to the door, I would say, care for any fresh fruits or vegetables today, ma'am? And then I tried to sell her some of the things that we were trying to sell. Now, I did that for four years until, uh, for summers that is, and then in 1940, there was a draft. The government said, we want all the able-bloodied young men to join the Army or the Navy. And so the man who I worked for uh, had to go. He was drafted. They called that the draft. He was drafted into the Army. And then I spoke to my brother, Emil. Emil, we can sell food. We can buy food and we can sell it at the farmer's market at 71st and State Street. So, Amy and I, in the summer, would go down, we would get up early in the morning, about six, seven o'clock, and then we would go to the farmer's market at 71st and State, and then I, Amy would watch our little coaster wagons, we had four, and they were attached, one was attached to the other, and I made some wooden platforms for each one of the coaster wagons, and then Amy, would pull two of these coaster wagons, and I would pull two. It was at this time that hot dogs began to be sold as a staple for hungry immigrants who would enjoy an affordable meal. Each vendor would contribute their own flair to the dog, adding a bit of onion here or a pickle spear there. Vendors would add cheap vegetables so as to make the dog a bit more of a meal. Eventually, the poverty-stricken Chicagoans developed a taste for a very specific combination of ingredients. And the Chicago hot dog was born. As the dog's popularity grew, establishments devoted to hot dogs began to spring up all over Chicago. And the rest is history. The hot dog is a centerpiece to Chicago's culture a symbol of the diversity and culture present in the Windy City. The immigrants of Chicago weren't treated especially well during the hard times. Some might even say they were used and cast aside like a cut of meat. But when the immigrants entered the industrial factories, they became like the hot dogs they created, cheap and disposable. The history of the hot dog is deeply intertwined with immigrants. Trying to imagine a Chicago without its immigrants would be like trying to imagine a Chicago without the hot dog. Without everything that the immigrants of Chicago have contributed over the years, over the generations, Chicago wouldn't be the same. Chicago is the way it is because of its immigrants and the diversity that they brought. And the hot dog is a symbol of that. time you had a hot dog? What was the first time what? You had a hot dog. I had a hot dog? Oh, we would have hot dogs uh, every once in a while in the summer. And <clears throat> what we uh, had quite a bit of was during the winter was sauerkraut. <laughs> 